So Blender just released a brand new grid fill feature for 4.5. If you haven't downloaded this, I'll link it in the description along with this documentation. This fixes a pretty big problem that you've probably ran into when it comes to your topology. And although it isn't perfect, I'll show you why in this video, it is pretty damn good. So if you want to read more about the updates for 4.5, I'll link this page in the description. But uh, for right now, I want to show you this new grid fill feature because it is very good actually. There are limitations, I'll show you why. Uh, the limitations are a bit disappointing if I'm honest, but I'm going to show you uh, what it does do well and what it doesn't do well. So I'm going to start by going to Blender 4.4, the old version, and I'm going to show you how this used to work. So let's say as a basic example, I had something like this, right? And it was just like an end gone, um, even with like crappy topology, for example, maybe I'll go in and let's just, I don't know, make some like crappy connections here. It doesn't really matter too much. So usually what you'd have to do in the old versions of Blender, you couldn't just go in control F and grid fill. It wouldn't work. You would have to delete that region and then select the boundary loops and then control F to grid fill that area basically. Now that was a pretty basic example, but what if you wanted to, you know, do something more complex where it wasn't, you know, just a square region. Maybe you had this portion up here deleted as well. So if I go into faces and then I went and went around here and then I just went to control F grid fill, we'd have a bit of a mess. And even if I kind of went around and I'm going to, this will lead into something new here in a second, but even if I went around and selected this portion grid fill, it wouldn't do exactly what I needed very cleanly. It would just kind of be a mess. Um, this will make more sense once I go over to 4.5 here. So check this out. I'm going to do the same exact thing here in 4.5. Yes, you can delete the faces and do the grid fill just like you could in earlier versions, but now you can do this without deleting the geometry. So even if you have an N-gon and crappy geometry here, you can actually select that region. You don't need to delete it. Control F grid fill and it's gonna you know sort that out for you now if you want to go a step further like i showed you before this is pretty neat actually i could delete this portion right here i could select this region grid fill this region it's going to be a bit of a mess here um, so i'm just going to adjust the span you could even try the simple blending if you wanted i'm just going to adjust the span here until it looks like i don't know reasonable Honestly, like something like this will be fun. I'm not sure why that's disattached. Let me try this one more time. We're going to go to grid fill. Just going to adjust the span here. You can even go to simple blending. doesn't matter. Now what I can do is I can select the outer portion, just the outer portion around here. All right. I'm going to do that. Make sure that's all selected there. And what we're going to do is we're going to press control F and grid fill. I'm going to turn off the simple blending feature. Just going to do that, set that to eight on the span and without deleting that region, it repatched everything pretty much. It's not perfect, but it did a pretty damn good job. Now, the issue I've seen with this is if I go into shade auto smooth, it looks fine on the surface, but if I add a sub D level or two or three, and then I go to a matte cap like this, you can begin to see the issues. It's very warped. This is not good if you're doing like an organic model or a car or anything like that. Not a huge deal, but you know, it's not very clean in terms of the shading. It's a bit warped, a bit dented. You can see that pretty obviously here in the matte caps. Now the solution to this, very simple guys, select everything, you're gonna press F3. You're gonna type in two sphere. You can also press shift alt S and i um, just gonna click, drag the factor up to one. And there you go. Now you have a perfect sphere. So. That's all you need to do. That's the additional step. It doesn't actually show that in the documentation, but now we have, um, you know, a very clean result. If I'm not mistaken, it might be warping a little bit more. Let me try this one more time Two sphere. Let me just put that to one. Maybe I'm mistaken here. No, I think it's fine. But yeah, you can see that compared to that old effect by just adding in two sphere, we have a very clean result. I think the slight warping here is because we have the um, UV sphere going on, which isn't perfect quad to the top. So not really a big deal. Now I want to show you the next one real quick. So I'm just going to hop to 4.4 just to show you. Let's say I had some, you know, messy topology like this. Maybe, 
you know, even some of this geometry here was a bit rotated, a bit skewed. And it just, you know, maybe it's quads, that's fine, but it wasn't really, you know, clean. If I subdivide this and run a mat cap, it's just going to look terrible, right? What you can actually do now in the new version is instead of going in here, and let me just turn off the sub D, instead of going in here and deleting this manually, which you'd have to do earlier, and then you'd have to go in and then grid fill, it was a pain. Now in 4.5, literally you just go in, say, you know, this region right here, just rotate that a bit. This one was messy. Now I can just go in, I can select this region, I can press Control F, grid fill, and it's just gonna, you know, keep that nice and clean. And there we go. So that's the new 4.5 feature, guys. I just wanted to make a quick video on this. It is a useful tool, but make sure if you're doing it on a sphere, you add in that additional step. I don't believe this was actually shown in the documentation, but if you want to get the shading uh, perfectly, you know, set up, make sure you do the two sphere option right after. All right. So overall, this is a pretty good update. Um, there are some limitations, obviously, but hopefully this helps you in your modeling. By the way, guys, if you want to learn our entire hard surface modeling workflow in under two weeks with about 30 to 60 minutes a day of work, we're running, as far as I know, the industry leading program for you know learning this stuff. We have thousands and thousands of testimonials on this program. We're getting people extremely good at hard surface modeling in a very short period of time. Uh, you can just look at all the proof on our page, click the link below. Uh, it's going to work for you too. Just go through the videos, watch the tutorials, and we can get you very good at hard surface modeling in about two weeks of time with about 30 to 60 minutes a day of work. No fluff. Everything's jam-packed in there and we're going to keep it, you know, updated as much as we need to. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.